Hey everyone, today I'll be talking about one of my favourite films of the 20th century and one of my favourite films, full stop. Definitely one of the best of the 20th century in my opinion, that being Matthew Kasovitz's 1995 French masterpiece Le Hen. Le Hen is a film about a group of three disenfranchised young friends consisting of Vince, Hubert and Saeed, who after a chaotic night of rioting in the marginal suburb of Paris, wander around unoccupied waiting for news about the state of health of a mutual friend who has been seriously injured when confronting the police. I absolutely love this film, uh, the distinct structure and the masterful writing make this one of, yeah, if not the best films of the 20th century. The characters are arguably one of, if not the most interesting aspect of Le Hen. Vince, played by Vincent Cassell, is a hot-headed Jewish man who encourages violence. Vince represents the dangers of pride, which is enforced by the story that the strange small man in the toilet stalls tells the trio when they're in Paris. You watch him tell the story and are at first confused as to why he's telling it, but when you look into it, it really reflects Vince's life. The story is about two men who were sent to a work camp during World War II and they travelled on a train and every so often the train would stop in order for the passengers to get off and go to toilet. However, one of the men, Gromonsky, was shy and didn't want to go to toilet around everyone so instead he went off on his own. Eventually the train starts moving and Gromonsky isn't back yet so he has to run to catch it and the storyteller reaches out his hand to help Gromonsky board the train but he hasn't buckled his trousers yet and he's holding them up with one of his hands. So every time Gromowski goes to reach the storyteller's hands, the trousers fall down, so he stops, pulls them up, and starts running. This cycle repeats until eventually the train is too far ahead of Gromowski and he's left for dead in the freezing cold. This story mirrors Vincent Hubert's situation so well, as I think Hubert represents the hand reaching to help Vince out of his rage-filled tendencies, but every time that Hubert reaches out to save him, Vince is reckless once again and this just sets them back even further just because of his pride and eventually Hubert will no longer be able to save Vince and he'll no longer be able to help him. Talking about Hubert, Hubert is an Afro-French man who is a pacifist and is played by the effortlessly cool Hubert Kunde. Hubert represents dreams, more specifically a dream to get away from where he is at the moment, to get away from the brutality and the broken class system of France. However, this dream is being held back by Vince, his rageful tendencies and his overwhelming yet dangerous pride. Lastly, we have Saeed, an Arab who represents resistance. Saeed is played by Saeed Tagmawi and he spends most of his time acting against the forces that suppresses him non-physically, doing things such as graffiti on police cars. Saeed is often on the sidelines about which of his friends to side with and which way of tackling the higher power is right violently like Vince or peacefully like Hubert. This film is so cool and stylish. The cinematography and camera work is incredible. To see this look no further than the iconic dolly zoom shot that happens on top of a bridge in Paris. The trio are filmed using an ultra-wide landscape ratio in their suburban surroundings, dwarfing them against their neighbourhood, but this switches to a long lens to shoot the characters in close-up when they're in Paris, almost denying Paris of its notorious beauty that we usually see in different types of media. In La Haine, Paris is displayed in a different way than usual. Normally it's portrayed as the city of love, one of the most beautiful places on earth, a place where everybody meets their soulmate and lovers go. This idea of Paris being a romantic city is flipped on its head by presenting Paris as a sleazy place, home to loose cannon drug dealers and corrupt and sadistic police officers. Kasovitz also chose to film in black and white mainly due to the fact that it was cheaper to produce than coloured film, but also because he could not control how poverty made an environment look ugly, which is very hard to do in colour. This decision is not the only aspect that supports Le Hen's aesthetic longevity. The fashion does as well. The choice of 90s clothing holds up so well and the outfits the characters wear are awesome, inspiring collaborations with many famous brands such as Carhartt and Reebok. Le Hen's structure and plot is amazing and maybe my favourite part about it. Usually a film will follow the traditional story path stated by Zvetan Todorov in his Equilibrium Theory. The story starts off in equilibrium with peace and balance. Then there's a crisis that breaks this peace and balance which is called the disruption. The characters go on a journey which is a search which then leads them to the peace and the balance being restored at the end of the film or story which is the new equilibrium. Le Hen strays from this path 
The film starts with a crisis, then in the end we don't get peace and balance, instead we are left with it being shattered once again. We don't receive a resolution, instead we are handed another crisis that will determine what happens next. Mirroring the famous quote uttered in the film, how you fall doesn't matter, it's how you land. Mais l'important c'est pas la chute, c'est l'atterrissage. Matthew Kasovitz once said in an interview that I knew the ending before I knew the storyline. Everything is about the end, the last few seconds. I find La Haine's distinct structure very interesting because it manages to captivate the audience so well. But when you actually analyse the plot, nothing in the 90 minute runtime, apart from the crucial last few minutes, actually matters. The tension in La Haine is unmatched. Watching the film you have a terrible feeling looming over you that something uncontrollable is imminent. The film takes place over a day and every so often time markers will pop up on the screen accompanied by a ticking clock sound. The constant ticking of a clock, much like a bomb, and the time markers sporadically being flashed upon the screen really enforce the idea that timing is running out within the audience and the uncontrollable event is coming. La Hen clearly takes inspiration from Spike Lee's 1989 film Do the Right Thing. Both of these films are masterpieces and if you were to ask me which is better, my answer would be different depending on how I feel on a certain day. Both films tackle terrible problems that are still relevant in society today, such as police brutality, racism, poverty and violence. Much like Do the Right Thing, the idea of La Hen was born from real life injustices and the deaths of many young ethnic minority men due to these issues. Makome Mabao was a 17 year old boy who Kasovitz heard when listening to the radio was shot by a cop while in police custody after a riot. Kasovic started to question why this had happened. Why did the cop get so mad to the point where he was pointing a gun at the boy's head to scare him? Did the boy know getting up that morning that it would be his last day on earth? So after questioning these things, Kasovic decided to write the story of Lahen from the kids that were suffering these problems point of view. As depressing as it is, by dealing with these issues, it makes these films truly timeless. Some problems in society never change, even when they must. Kasovitz himself has stated, there will always be police brutality. We have to remind ourselves it exists. We also have to learn our history and at a certain moment say, that's enough. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoy watching it. Uh, I heavily recommend La Hain to anyone who wants to get into cinema, into French cinema. Uh, it's just an amazing film. It got me into a lot more films. It's incredibly stylish and it's incredibly cool. It's timeless. And yeah, I just, I, I can't recommend it enough. Just definitely, definitely give it a watch if you want to. And yeah, I'll see you in the next film analysis I do.